Wild Tobacco Tree Park by David Smith. Music composed by Christina Sergi. Sometime in 2017, a wild tobacco tree began growing in the backyard. I encouraged it with water and it grew very quickly. Grass also started growing around it. I also encouraged it in the same way. One day I was admiring my 10-foot tree and realized it was a resembling a park. I decided to call it Wild Tobacco Tree Park. Due to my studying of the local Native Americans, the Tataviam, which means people facing the sun, I knew what it was immediately. They smoked it as well as used it in religious ceremonies and offered it to the Great Spirit in thanks for their health and daily food hunting and gathering. I've always done a lot of gardening in the backyard and had a small variety of plants. Around 2002, I began having pains in my feet. After trying several shoe inserts, I did find one that helped, but I also tried aloe vera. I've been using it every day since. Aloe vera has been used for centuries all over the world. Cleopatra used it as a beauty treatment. Alexander the Great and Christopher Columbus both used it as a treatment on soldiers' wounds. It can also be used for burns, hair loss, and various skin conditions. It is also edible and could be helpful against cancer. Some of these applications require some preparation. A search on YouTube will answer any questions. After watching several videos on YouTube, I recently began eating it myself. I removed the spines on the sides with a knife and removed one side of the outside leaf with a large spoon. I used the same spoon to scrape the gel and let it soak in a container to get most of the yellow bitter taste out. I soak it in a second container before putting it in a baggie with garlic flowers or garlic bulbs. I let it soak for at least 15 minutes in each container. The garlic taste helps it to go down easier. It's kind of gross to swallow. I feel it go all the way down. Mmm. I also raise red worms. I use their castings and tea for our orange trees, a fig tree, and a very large avocado tree in the front yard. The plywood boxes and various plastic containers in the following pictures hold my red worms. The piles of castings on the tables is how I harvest and separate the worms from their castings. The worms eat the grass from mowing the lawns. I also feed them horse manure, paper, and cardboard. They eat anything organic. I don't feed them all of our food scraps since it attracts too many bugs, but they do get banana peelings, eggshells, and avocado skins. This is where I put the grass trimmings and horse manure the compost department. Both need time to dry out, the grass clippings a couple of weeks and the manure 30 days or more. With the manure, any medications the horses might be using need the time to dissipate. I rake it back and forth every couple of days and wet it with the hose to help it along. I didn't make a drawing or have a plan of what I wanted to do with the park. I just added to it as I went along. I made a couple of trails, lining them with rocks and filling the path with sand. We've had ice plant growing in this corner for a long time. I planted a section of it along the trail. I used broken pieces of concrete and brick as a walkway next to the tobacco tree. I also used pieces of broken concrete and brick as stands for my pots to sit on. I'd always thought of growing herbs but never took the time. Now in my older years, it's time. One day at the local thrift store in 2018, I found a book called The Green Pharmacy by James A. Duke and bought it. A couple of weeks later, I found one called The Good Herb by Judith Ben Hurley and bought it also. Both are full of good information. Last spring in 2019, I bought a few herbs. Parsley, mint, peppermint, basil, sage, rosemary, and thyme. We already had lots of garlic growing from previous years. Within a few weeks, I was able to start making tea using some of them. The tea is good for you. It's full of antioxidants and also helps build your immune system. By the end of the summer of 2019, I was able to expand some of the herbs with cuttings from some of the plants. The worm castings make almost everything grow very easily. 
I tell people I don't just have a green thumb, but green hands. This basil is from last year. Several baby basils appeared below the mother plant and I transplanted them. One has two plants that I didn't separate since I might have damaged the roots in the process. They're the twins. The garlic also keeps reseeding and multiplying. I put several pits from the avocado tree in the worm beds and they grow very easily as well. These are railroad pieces I've collected while hiking in the local mountains. I also have a rock garden with jade, a ground cover, and my heart-shaped rocks. I have several cats who hang out and follow me around the garden while I'm weeding, transplanting plants, trimming, etc. There are several squirrels living around us. They'll run along the fence. Sometimes they'll stop by for a minute. I've also seen them eating the oranges. Once in a while I get a visit from an alligator lizard. Inside my worm beds I find salamanders. Some of them are full grown, some just little babies. This year I also had quite a few ladybugs. They're good for the garden. They'll eat the aphids off of the roses. Hummingbirds are attracted to the flowers of the tobacco tree. I've also seen them in the tobacco trees in the mountains. They seem to tease me as I'm trying to get a picture of them. They'll hover near the tree, then dive into a flower repeatedly as I snap away on the camera. An old gray guy. I'm an old gray guy, still fighting to get by. I still have hopes and dreams, plenty of plans and schemes. I do the same as when I was young, still writing the songs to be sung, a lot slower than I was before, still knocking on plenty of doors. I'm still moving forward each day, still using the same old ways. I still have some things to say, still carrying on with my ways.